5. I'm Engineer Tolentino. Here's another video presentation of ECA graduating batch of 2013 from Polytechnic University of the Philippines, Santa Rosa Campus. This batch consists of shoulder, elbow, and finger. I hope you enjoy watching this video. Part of what makes us human is the way we are able to use our hands. Effective use of our hands requires stable, painless elbow joints. It enables us to live and move objects in place where we want them to be. The bones of the elbow are the humerus, the upper arm bone, the ulna, the larger bone of the forearm on the opposite side of the thumb, and the radius, the smaller bone of the forearm on the same side as the thumb. The elbow itself is essentially a hinge joint meaning it bends and straightens like a hinge, which allows movement in only one plane. The elbow joint can perform extension and flexion. The range of motion of the human elbow is about 0 degree from the extension to 145 to 150 degrees of flexion. Different kinds of actuators were used just to achieve the proper movement of the human elbow. Some of them use motors such as servo, stepper, and DC, which sacrifices the force because all these actuators have low force-to-weight ratio. Sample of humanoid robots that uses these actuators are Riba, Robonaut, Sandermas Robotic Elbow, and Dexter Arm. Present work deals with gematic muscles, which, according to them, are the best way to mimic the movement of human arm. But these artificial muscles only mimic the movement of human muscle. The main drawback with the use of pneumatic muscle is that the construction of artificial muscles was just 20 to 30% compared with the construction of human muscle. Therefore, because of the limited construction of the artificial muscle, the robot arm fails to reach the angular displacement of the human elbow, which became the main hindrance why the robotic arm, actuated by artificial muscle, fails to mimic the movement of human elbow. To solve this problem regarding existing works, the proponents develop a design that can perfectly perform the angular displacement made by the human elbow. Based on different research conducted, pneumatic cylinder is used for the proper angular displacement of the elbow joint in this project. The choice of actuator was based on the characteristics of the human muscle in the arm which includes the strength, the speed, and the angular displacement with the rotating motion in the elbow joint which is the focus of the study. To achieve the accurate angles for the extension and flexion with regards to the measurements of the pneumatic cylinder, the proponents performed different actual trials, and it came up with the rocking motion of the pneumatic cylinder and the added 5 inches extension in the pneumatic piston. The added extension in the piston helps the lower arm to reach the range of motion that the robot needs to perform. The rocking motion of the pneumatic cylinder is the main reason for the cut portion of the aluminum in the upper part. Another cut portion in the aluminum serves as the limiter and as an indicator that it is in its maximum position. The proponents created a 3D model of the prototype in Autodesk Inventor to simulate the range of movement of the designed project. Here, they were able to determine collisions and unexpected movement within the joints. They were also able to revise measurements if needed. Controller, a device that regulates the operation of another device. The design of the controller is based on the sizes of the upper and lower arm. The controller was designed to be worn by the user to perform the different angles that the elbow can make. Both the controller and the robotic elbow have potentiometers, which serves as the position sensor of the system, POT1 for the controller and POT2 for the robotic elbow. POT1 exhibits voltage difference with POT2 in its every movement, and that is how the actuator receives its command on whether it will extend, retract, or stop at the desired angle which causes the flexion and extension of the robotic elbow. Pneumatic system was used by the proponents to make the movement of the robot possible. 
the proponents made some variations in using pneumatic valves to control the movement of the piston rod. First concept is the shifting of pressure, wherein they used 5 over 2 way pneumatic valve as the passageway of the exhaust of the system. Since 5 over 2 way has two possible triggers, the proponents set two possible ways on how the exhaust pressure will be released. First output is said to be the high pressure exit, wherein, if a quick movement is done by the user of the controller, the exhaust pressure will pass through it, causing a quick movement by the robot. While the second output serves as the low pressure exit, wherein when small movements are needed to be performed, the exhaust pressure will pass through it. Therefore, because of this concept, the speed of the piston rod is not being sacrificed. Another concept is the pressure obstruction. Here, the pressure's passageway is being black, causing it to be enclosed in the pneumatic cylinder causing the piston rod to stop on its current position. Therefore, this concept helps a lot in the proponent's goal of achieving the angular displacement control of the robot through pneumatic system. Now, it's time for our prototype presentation. And that's the end of our presentation. For more videos, click this link. Thanks, Thanks for watching! Out of control, how to go, 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 go,